Our hopes essentially for today, for tomorrow, for this conference is very much just to offer a space um, where we're able to come together, where we're able to share practice, to talk about what we do, to maybe rethink the ways we do things, um, to really look at with this focus of, of queer in the somatic, how we might disrupt, how we might challenge some of the binaries that sometimes confine the way that we look at the body. So what we're really interested in is how we talk about our practice, which is a physical, somatic-based practice, how we uh, communicate that. Um, often, in, the, in a university setting, we have to use words to do that, and that doesn't always capture what the, mm -hmm. the feeling of that is. <laughs> I think that as we're imagining how to queer the somatic, or what a queering of a somatic might be, I want to privilege play and make play something that we're also concerned with. In the few ideas I want to share with you today, I'm not sure I have that many, but I'll see what, see what we can come up with. Um, there's going to be a, a probably a turn towards the seriousness of trying to make space for queer and to actually affirm queer. What authentic movement can kind of get to is that there's this, there's this experience that we divide we have to, um, and there's some way that we can um, approach something without the binaries, without the splitting of male, female, subjective, objective, um, body, mind. I'm coming through a, a purely architectural uh, perspective and in a way my focus is to learn from um, your um, specific and individual and um, collective um, ways of thinking in movement. The basic lineage that I lay out in Notes on Territory is that we start with the cross, we start with the crucifix. If I'm a trans woman who's laughed at on the street and I'm denied work and I'm denied housing, right, or if I'm a lesbian who's incarcerated and then denied the right to citizenship, these are all different ways that I'm denied access to my, to my humanity, right? And one way to skirt the line of this denial for me is to find other people and creatures and objects and spaces and architectures and histories that I can feel in kinship with, or at least some kind of relationship to. Part of what I did this year in February for LGBT History Month was at the National Maritime Museum in Greenwich, the one with the ships. Um, <laughs> they are the Royal Naval Museum. These are organizations and institutions which are bound up in all kinds of troublesome politics, all kinds of tricky histories. I walked into this place, I was like, okay, uh, what do I do here? How do I represent? gender diversity, how do I represent sexualities, how do I represent London? I thought, education's kind of queer, right? It's a queer practice. Problematizing, refusing to accept a particular kind of tidy narrative. So here's a lovely picture of Tom um, doing his thing. Uh, part of this installation as people arrive in the Queen's house. We wanted to understand the queer history of Margate and how it's always seemed to, to embrace difference and provide a place for people to come largely from London to, to be naughty. We turned the pavilion into an exhibition space. We put a pink curtain around it. We wanted to find new, new uses for this shelter that was falling apart and just looked like a load of, you know, it stank of piss, it was disgusting. With a bit of love, with a bit of understanding how things can come together, you, I think, can create a, um, you know, sort of an hour moment in, in what was previously a, a shitload of rotten timber. Places that have been created for queer people like us are closing en masse for different reasons. There's always a different reason. There's always a good reason why this place has to go. They can't afford the rent or we need to build a shopping centre or we need Crossrail, all of these reasons. But there's a tragedy that we're losing a lot of the personality of London. 
Now the thing about the first Out Cafe is the big deal that when it opened back in 1982 is it was the first queer venue that was open during the day. This is a really special place and when it closed I feel like a bit of queer London died. So what is synesthesia? Maybe some people might know, others might not, so I'm just going to explain it a little bit. Um, synesthesia means the trigger of one sense simultaneously and involuntarily triggers a second sense. So meaning, for example, I'm a synesthete, so when I hear sounds, yeah, like my neurons and my brain sounds activated, at the um, same time I receive colours, textures and shapes. Stretchy. Mm -hmm. Bitty. I dance in heels because I want to dance in heels and I feel empowered when I put a heel on, like I feel like I could take on the world and I want other people to feel like that. The mobility of the body, the shape of the body, is really shaped by the movement of the breath. And so whilst we're finding different kind of architectures of the body, as we begin to find different surfaces or different relationships with gravity, there's a sense that that external perception of the shape of the body is only a reality because of the breath moving within it. Today, I thought I would offer to you experiencing the felt sense. In order to enter the felt sense, to be able to access it, you need to be connected to the bodily sensations. What's truly going on within? Intermittently open your eyes and close them. This quadrant is the gathering, so you're really going to gather yourself. Think of your body as a, you're going to build up this body, which is a bag of bones swimming in water. And this is the pleasure quadrant as well. You are going to move into the doing part of your life. All these different identities matter, but some of them come forward more than others at different times. So they're contingent. So like claiming I'm a gay white man, yeah, but maybe not at home when my mom is mad at me. You know, maybe that's not really the most important thing I am in that interaction. But to just kind of maybe massage us um, together again towards how an identity politic or a somatic theory or even the idea of how queer might operate is going to be contingent. Um, and it's going to matter that there's going to be something else too, that any of these systems aren't going to answer everything and they're also not always for all of us all the time. So I was thinking about that like trying to imagine ourselves unfixed if it's helpful, um, committed to an intentionality that's proto-feminist, anti-racist, please, <laughs> and queer affirming, please, because we need it in the world, it's needed in the world. Thank you very much.